Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial series on the Little Book of Algorithms 2.0. Essentially, I've uh, revised the book so that there's a lot more um, of the challenges to give people more practice um, because I felt as though there were a few examples and then only one or two um, chances to practice those skills. And it'd be much better if we could actually practice these um, to be more fluent effectively. Um, a lot of the examples remain the same, uh, but we're gonna go through some of those challenges today. Let's start with functions. Functions are something which um, all of you are going to need to be able to master um, if you're aiming for say grade seven, eight or nine in your GCSE computer science. And it's something which all programmers um, you really need to master in order to be considered competent. So we'll look at some of these um, lowest number programs and then we'll have a go at a couple of the challenges um, and the series will continue from there. So this is the first um, program. Uh, I'll talk you through it. There are two variables, one called num1 and then one called num2. We're accepting an integer input um, for both of them. And then we're saying if num1 is less than or equal to num2, then the lowest number is num1. Otherwise, um, the lowest number is, is going to be num2. And then the output of the lowest number is, use the plus to concatenate. And because we're mixing data types here, we've got string here, and we've got an integer here, we have to use the str, the string function, to cast this into a string so that we can join two strings together. And we'll look at alternative ways of doing that um, later on as well. Um, so let's run the program and have a look at what it looks like. We've learned our first number, so let's try 23. Second number, 31. And hopefully it should say that the lowest number is 23. Um, it looks like I've still got um, the program running here in the background. So I've still got um, other bits running here. So got this running as well. Okay, so that would be a um, an example of a simple program. I'm just going to run that again. Let's so have a quick view and just see it here. Yeah. Okay. So we've got 23, 31, and then the program ends. The lowest number is 23. But in reality, you may want a program to run several times. You might want to be able to call it from different places within your program. Let's say, for example, you've got a, um, a program which allows you to log in, enter a username and a password. Then you probably want to be able to do that for multiple users at multiple times. So you want to be able to call it more than once. And that's where um, functions might come into it. So let's look first at uh, another way of writing a subprogram, which is a procedure. Uh, this is a procedure here. We we'll see that it looks very similar. The only thing that we've done differently is the first thing we've done is we've uh, defined, just uh, sort of the indents here, we, we've defined our procedure called lower num to start with. Um, and that's how we can use it. And then we've got these two parameters, which are also known as local variables, num1 and num2. This code remains the same, and this code remains the same as well. And the only thing is, is like, where do these num1 and num2 come from? Well, although we've defined this procedure, it doesn't actually run until it's called. So procedures and functions don't do anything until they're called. Here we've got a variable called first num and second num. They allow you to do inter inputs. And this is where we do our call. We call the lower num procedure that we defined here. We pass in first num and second num, and these are known as arguments. This argument, first num, is passed into num1. This one, second num, is passed into num2. And they're given different names because actually they take different spaces in memory. Although you might think, well, they're the same number. Why don't we just call this num1, num2, this one num1, num2 as well? Um, because that makes more sense. It does, but in actual fact, 
the f these are four different memory address locations, so they need four different names, and this is what um, good programming looks like. So once again, you won't notice any difference in terms of the way the program runs. We ask, enter one number, 23, another one, 31, and then it tells the lowest number is 23. Now, to demonstrate why we separate these out um, and what that means, well, num1 and num2 are local. And as soon as this function or procedure ends, in this case, it's a procedure, num1 and num2 are no longer accessible. So I do num1, it will say that's not defined. However, first num is still accessible because that is a global um, variable. Yeah, see, we can still access that. The problem is, uh, yeah, we've outputted it. And yes, we can actually call it over and over again. So a good thing is that if we want to reuse this, we don't have to um, recompile the program. Uh, we can actually just call it. So we can do lower num and enter in any numbers. Uh, and it should output the lowest number, whatever it is. However, we're having to recall this here. So how about if you wanted to um, use that number, number 12, somewhere else, well, it's best to actually store it somewhere that can be used. Um, and the way that we do that then is by using um, a function. And you'll notice that once again, it's very similar. We've defined um, the subprogram for lower num. This time it's a function because we see these keywords return. The way that this works then is if we look at this code first, because the definition has stayed practically the same, we've got two numbers that were two integers that we're entering. We call lower num with first and a second num, but we've also got lowest equals. So let's just bear that in mind for the meantime. First num gets passed into num1, as we've done previously. Second num gets passed into num2. If num1 is less than or equal to num2, we return num1 because that's the, the lowest. Otherwise, we return num2. And what does that return mean? It means that number is returned into this variable called lowest. So that gets passed back here, and then we can output it there. The beauty of that is you can have several different functions working together. So you could have a higher number function, and you could um, return that as well, then you could do highest minus lowest gives you actually the range. Um, so you can use the numbers. Whereas previously, once we've outputted them using a print statement here or here, you can't use that value um, anymore. Um, so let's just see what it looks like. And you'll see that it's, it's fairly similar. Oh, let's just get rid of that triple quote. That's just my way of commenting out different sections. First number, 18. Second number, 12. And also the lowest number is 12. So it works the same. Um, as you can see there. Um, but fundamentally, uh, this is better programming because you would then be able to use lowest anywhere that you want to. So let's have a look at some of the challenges then. Um, here we've got um, our first challenge. Now, I'd advise you to hand write these answers first. Some people say, why don't we just type them straight into the IDE? Um, I suppose it's because in your GCSE exam, your paper to exam, you're, you're going to be handwriting these. So it's good preparation for that. If you're just learning programming, then I suppose it doesn't hurt to handwrite some code first to essentially be able to walk through the code in your head and see whether or not it works. So writing a subprogram for the highest number now has three parameters, num1, num2, num3, which we see here. The program should take three numbers as arguments and return the highest number. So if num1 is greater than or equal to num2, and num1 is greater than or equal to num3, then what we're going to do is we are going to return oh, num1. Yeah? And... Uh, because that is the highest number. Elif, let's just get rid of the autocorrect, num2 is greater than or equal to num1, and num2 is greater than or equal to num3, 
then what are we going to do? Well, num2 is now the highest, so return num2. For the third if statement, we don't actually need to write an elif because we know that if it's not num1 or num2, then clearly the third number that we need to return is going to be num3. Yeah? And that would be our function that we should um, call. And that's actually going to be the next challenge because this on its own doesn't do anything because we haven't called it. So if I were to copy and paste this in, um, and let's just save this. Here. Um, and run it, it wouldn't actually do anything. Oh, typo there, but great on read, so the space actually matters. So, yeah, nothing happens because we haven't passed in any um, values into our function. We could do um, manually, so we could, because we've defined it now, I believe we could do highest number. Um, 9, 99, 9, then it should output 1 to 9, so it definitely works, but actually in your exam you're likely to be asked um, to do these separately, so you might be asked to write a function here, and then you might be asked, the next challenge I believe is how to call it, yeah? So calling it as we saw previously, um, we're going to ask you to enter three integers, and then call the highest number program, what we just did, so, um, and the return value is stored a variable called highest, which you can see here, then output is a meaningful message. So all we're doing here then is just doing num3 uh, in, to give it a meaningful name, equals uh, int input, integer input, open speech mark, enter the third number, and we're double close bracket because we've opened two brackets here because int is a function for casting to an integer and input is a function itself. Then we'll do highest equals highest number. So this is us calling highest number. And then we need to say um, what our variables are. So we're passing a num1 in, comma, num, oh, num2 in, comma, num3 in. Yeah, and then when we call it, um, it gets stored in highest. And then we say print the highest number was. We've got two ways of doing this. It's close to speech mark. We can just do uh, print the highest number was highest. Or what we can do, concatenating with comma, will automatically do all the casting for us. Or we can do plus str highest if we want to cast it manually as a string, and that would be how we would call it. We can test that it works um, by pasting it underneath. There might be some like minor formatting issues um, related to these speech marks, because they're formatted differently in um, Word and Publisher as they are in um, Idle, so I'm just placing those. They're not quite the same kind of speech mark. Um, Okay, now we're good. It's huge space there. Right, okay, let's run it. So now we've got our first number, uh, 9, 99, 129, and it should come out with the highest number was 129, which is correct. You'll notice that with the concatenation, there's a bit of an error, the issue there, because it's so tight. When you're concatenating with a plus, it doesn't automatically add a space. So you're going to have to manually add that space in there. Um, and then it should work. So we've got here, well, turn it around. And I'll say the highest number was 222. So those are the first two challenges from the Little Book of Algorithms 2.0. I hope that explains it well. And then in the next video, we'll look at um, the next couple of challenges. Um, and how we might um, further um, practice our functions for fluency. Uh, I hope that's useful.